aquatic habitat biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife. What we're doing here today is uh, stocking giant salvinia weevils to help control giant salvinia. The reason we want to do that is because giant salvinia grows in such a way it creates a map that prohibits all light from entering the water which basically destroys primary production and that means the phytoplankton and the zooplankton that all aquatic organisms need to live. So basically what happens under the mat is that there is no sunlight so there's no photosynthesis occurring. The water under a mat of giant salvinia will turn acidic and it will turn crystal clear but there will be no nutrients there because it's actually taking nutrients out and not providing anything. So it actually creates a desert under the mat. That's one of the biggest ecological impacts that giant salvinia has. What we're looking at here is uh, 20 tubs of uh, infected giant salvinia with, uh, it's infested with gi uh, giant salvinia weevils that we use to, as a biocontrol to reduce populations in affected reservoirs and streams and such. Uh, we have, what we're standing at is our facility here at the Jasper State Fish Hatchery. Uh, two, uh, greenhouse structures with raceways, partially funded by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and then the greenhouses were funded by Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, our primary purpose is to grow as many weevils as possible for distribution to affected waters in Texas, and particularly Toledo Bend and B.A. Steinhagen, uh, two nearby reservoirs. What we do is we use mature salvinia that are gathered from the affected lakes we bring them to this site and inoculate them with Certobagus weevils, which has proven to be a, an effective biocontrol for giant salvinia. The weevil is from South America, from the same region that giant salvinia originates. It has proven to be an effective biocontrol and has proven not to affect anything in the United States other than giant salvinia. Its entire, life, uh, its entire life cycle is based on that plant. It's the only plant it eats, and without giant salvinia, it dies. So we have approval from the uh, USDA for release in the United States. And our problem is, is that although giant salvinia weevils are already present in Texas, our numbers drop sharply every winter due to cold weather. The greenhouse structures provide us the ability to grow weevils year-round so that we can produce more weevils and have more weevils available in the spring when they're normally at their lowest numbers in the wild. We introduce the weevils in the spring, we have a longer growing season during the summer, and therefore we get a better result towards the fall and the latter part of the growing season. We hope that in, at some time we can in, increase the biopressures to a degree on the giant salvinia infestations on Texas lakes to reduce them enough that we will not need to use herbicides or use a lot less herbicides and thereby save thousands of dollars. What we like to do is pat them down into the mat because if you have larvae or anything that are in the stems of the plants and they're left high and dry up above the, the water, the plants will dry out and we'll lose them. So what we like to do is pat them down with the nets and, and get them down in and incorporate them into the mat themselves so they have the best possible chance of survival. Everyone can help prevent invasive species from becoming established in Texas waters. Most of the infestations we find are found at boat ramps. They get there by boat trailers brought from other regions of the state or other waters or even the same lake from a different boat ramp. It would, very, it would help tremendously if everyone would clean their boat trailers off whenever they leave an area and avoid using infected boat ramps. 